Mr. Malero, are you there? I'm here, Judge. I have Mr. Madrid from the jail. Do you need a breakout session with him? Uh, yeah, just real quick, not nothing bad or too long. Okay, one moment. Ms. Dumont, is Mr. McCormick at your office with you? Yes, Your Honor, he's right here. And we're ready. Okay. This is file 24-21705-FH People versus Wesley Allen McCormick. We are here today for a pretrial conference in this case. We are proceeding day by video conference. Uh, first, let me ask the attorneys to place their appearance on the record, beginning with Ms. McClure. Phoebe McClure on behalf of the people. Katerina Dumont for Mr. McCormick. Okay, and uh, I'm sorry, so we have two cases here today. 23-21647-FH uh, and 24-21705-FH. Uh, uh, both are set for pretrial. So, Ms. Dumont, where do we stand with Mr. McCormick's case today? Your Honor, uh, we did get a pretrial offer, and I did get a COBS agreement in which the court agreed to no more than 60 days jail um, up front. What we're requesting is another um, a, another pretrial date in which we can, um, <clears throat> maybe 30 days out, in which Mr. McCormick can continue the counseling he's in and the drug tests um, he's currently drug testing two times a week plus colors. He's in counseling four times a week, three group, one individual for a total of already 22 sessions. Um, our, our perspective is if we can show the court that he's ready for uh, probation without any upfront jail, that is our goal. Um, and I think if we get a one month adjournment, we can show the court that he's continuing on um, a path to sobriety and recovery. Okay, Ms. McClure, anything to address from the people's standpoint? I would leave it in the court's discretion. At uh, this point, I will uh, agree with that adjournment. So we'd be looking at uh, about 30 days would be April 17th. Let's go with April 17th at 8.15 a.m. if that works for everybody. Yes, that works. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Dumont, would you prepare that stipulation in order, please? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I think we're all set uh, with this one then. Thank you. You can go ahead and log out. Mr. Sal, I just had Mr. Highland pop into the Zoom uh, waiting room. I'm bringing him over now. Are you going to need a breakout session with him? Yes, please. I don't need a breakout. No, we're, we're okay with that. I'm sorry. Okay, you're just ready to go then? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, Mr. Highland, are you able to hear me? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, uh, we are on the record in file 23-21536-FH, People versus Matthew Lee Highland. 
We are here today for a pretrial conference in this case. We are proceeding today by video conference. First, let me ask the attorneys to place their appearance on the record. B.B. McClure on behalf of the people filling in for prosecutor record, David McCready. Stan Sell on behalf of the defendant, Matthew Highland. Okay, and Mr. Sala, where are we with Mr. Highland's case? I did uh, submit a thumb drive to Mr. McCready's office. I believe they're still working on downloading uh, a Facebook messages from what I understand is what he told me when we submitted the, the thumb drive. So at this point, I think we just need an adjournment. Ms. McClure, do you know if there's anything you need to address from the people's standpoint today? I I don't. I see there was a note to, to do that, to take care of those Facebook records, I guess, but I don't see that anything's happened since then. So I guess I have nothing to add. All right. And I'm sorry, Mr. Sala, how long, how far out were you looking? Uh Probably uh, 60 days. Hopefully we'll get it and have an opportunity to look at them. So then with May 15th at 8.15, if that works for everybody. Uh, can we do it a week later than that? That would be May 22nd. Yes. All right, so May 22nd at 8.15. Uh, Mr. Sala, can your office prepare that stip and order? Yes, Your Honor. Um, may I sign uh, Ms. McClure's name on that stip and order? Yes, you may. Thank you. I'll get that done. May 22nd at 8.15. Correct. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. McClure. Right, thank you then, Mr. Highland. You're all set. You can go ahead and log out. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Malero, I, Mr. Madrid has apparently left his Zoom pod. Can you call the jail and tell them, Mr. Madrid? Judge, that Zoom pod was... Um... Couldn't really. Oh, are they trying to find? They're trying to find a different one for him. I hope so. Okay. Yeah. We're prepared to go forward, but I couldn't hear a thing he said. Okay, we're calling the jail right now to try to get back. Mr. Murphy, are you ready to proceed with Mr. Uh, Stewart? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, this is file 23-21657-FH, People versus Zachary Allen Stewart. Uh, we are here today for a pretrial conference in this case. We are proceeding today by video conference. Uh, first, let me ask the attorneys to place their appearances on the record. B.B. McLaren, we have the people. Matthew Murphy, appearing behalf of Mr. Stewart. <clears throat> All right, and uh, Mr. Stewart is here by Zoom. Uh, Mr. Stewart, can you uh, just state your name, please? Zachary Allen Stewart. All right, and Mr. Murphy, where do we stand with Mr. Stewart's case today? Your Honor, um, at this time, I was going to ask if we could, um, well, I, I thought maybe we should set trial on this date just to have a final uh, end date for the case. I believe it'll ultimately be resolved short of the trial, though. Um, I need to speak with Ms. McClure further and then speak to Mr. Stewart about her answer on some things. Um, so I, again, I guess if um, the court would be okay, maybe another pretrial. Um, but if the court is concerned with the length of time this, this case is taking, then we, we'll be fine with setting a one-day trial date. Okay. Ms. McClure, anything we need to address from people's side? Um, I guess I would ask for one more call <laughs> for Mr. Murphy and I to, to chat. I am getting kind of a backlog of trials and trial setting being set back to back. Um, so I'd rather not take up another trial date if it's one that might resolve. Yes, Your Honor, with that, we'd ask, we'd be fine with setting another pretrial. Again, I, I believe it'll be resolved short of trial. And I, I would agree with Ms. McClure, there's no need to clog up a, a already clogged docket then of trials. 
Well, I, I appreciate people's uh, difficult dockets. The courts is uh, busy as well. And uh, the, the case is at 90 days. And, um, you know, 90 days is, in my opinion, sufficient for negotiations to happen and offers to be made and decisions to be made. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's where I, I need to start setting trials in order to uh, try to stay consistent with uh, what the court's guidelines are in terms of how cases should be processed. So um, I'll, I'll give you one more on this, um, but at the next one, we're gonna set this for a trial. Let's go with uh, April 17th at 8.15 a.m. if that date's all right with everyone. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. That works. Thank you. All right. So, Mr. Stewart, your next date is April 15th at 8.15 a.m. You'll log back in with all the same Zoom information that you used today. Okay. And uh, Mr. Murphy, would you prepare a stipulation and order for that adjournment, please? Yes, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Could you just clarify the date? I wasn't sure if that was the 17th or the 15th. I, I apologize. I, I just misspoke. It, it's April 17th at 8.15 a.m. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. All right, Mr. Valero, well, we're waiting for Mr. Madrid. Uh, I do have Mr. Paulding here. If you need a breakout session with him, we can set him up in the hallway. He's here in person. Um, don't think I do, Judge, unless he wants one. Mr. Paulding, do you need to speak with Mr. Malero before we have your hearing? No, Your Honor. Okay, you can come forward and sit at the table here closest to the television screen. Uh, Judge? Yeah. Yeah, the jail just called and said uh, Mr. Madrid is refusing to come back out. Okay, thank you for that update. Okay, we are on the record now in file 23-21326-FH and 23-21449-FH. Uh, People versus Bush Lee Paulding. We are here today for pretrial conferences in both of those cases. We are proceeding today uh, by video conference. Just let me have the attorneys place their appearance on the Allison Arnold for the people. <laughs> Salvatore Malero on behalf of Bush Paulding. All right, and Mr. Malero, where do we stand with Mr. Paulding's case today? Uh, Your Honor. Uh, where we stand is I'm asking the court to adjourn this out perhaps four weeks. Uh, I am making some progress in my negotiations with Ms. Arnold on some resolutions in these matters. So that would be the basis for my request for an adjournment. All right, Ms. Uh, Ms. Arnold, uh, anything we need to address from the people's side? Uh, no, Your Honor, we concur with that request. All right, so four weeks would be April 10th. How about April 10th at 8.15 a.m.? That's fine, Judge. That's fine. Okay, and Mr. Malaro, can you prepare that stipulation in order, please? Yes, I will do so, Judge. Okay, so Mr. Paulding, your next date is April 10th at 8.15. You can uh, come back in person uh, if you like, or you could also attend by video conference if you want. Uh, the bailiff will give you the Zoom information. Okay, thank you. April 10th, right, 8.15. Correct. Hey, Mr. Paulding, come see me um, probably in a week or so, okay? Okay. Mr. Murphy, I do have uh, Ms. Williams here. Are you going to need a breakout session with her? If I could, please, Your Honor. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Malero, I do have Mr. Lindsay here in person, I believe. Uh, are you going to need to speak with him? Uh, yeah, I'll probably need to speak to him, Judge. 
Okay. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, there's an iPad right outside the door in the hallway. If you go out there, I will bring that into the meeting and then put you in a breakout session with Mr. Blair. Sergio, that the camera on that is off and the microphone is muted. Can you go see okay. if you can fix that? All right, Ms. Williams, I'm going to place you in a breakout session with Mr. Um, Murphy, if you give me just a moment. Okay. No, I don't want to do that. Let's see if it works. Okay, I think we're all set now. Thank you. Judge, do you have somebody in the waiting room with the 419? Um, uh, give, give me just a second, Evan. Give me a moment. I'm sorry. Here we go. Cheers. All right. Okay. All right. So, no, Ms. Walsh, I don't have anyone in the waiting room that is just here under a telephone number. I don't know what they're logged in as. They're calling from um, a correctional facility in Ohio regarding Kayla Price. I just wanted to let you know that. Okay, so I, I have the Kayla Price is in the waiting room. Oh, perfect. Okay, so they're calling from a correctional facility in, um, from Ohio. Uh, excuse me. I'm, your attorney is across the hall with Judge Anselm. As soon as she's right, back, I'm going to work at six o'clock this morning, though. I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that. I can't do anything without your attorney. As soon as she's here, I'll get to your case. And we'll get all sir, all right, sir, sir, sir. If you're going to be disruptive in court, you're going to find yourself in even more trouble than you are right now. All right, good morning, Miss. You are Kayla Ann Price. Ms. Price, uh, your device is muted. I'm going to send you a request to unmute. Thank you. We are on the record in file 22-21109-FH and 21-20621-FH, People versus Kayla Ann Price. We are here today for arraignment on uh, a request and summons for probation violation in both cases. We are proceeding today by video conference. Uh, Miss, you are Kayla Ann Price? Yes, Your Honor. All right, uh, Ms. Price, you're before the court today on uh, a request and summons for probation violation in both files. Have you received copies of those? I have not, but I'm aware of the violation. All right, so we'll we'll make sure that we get you copies uh, of those documents. Uh, they do, uh, there's two, but they both allege the same thing. They allege that you violated the terms of your probation uh, by pleading guilty to identity fraud, attempted possession of cocaine, and failure to appear in Putnam County, Ohio, and also by uh, 
being positive for methamphetamine. Do you understand that those are the allegations against you? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, in file 21-20621-FH, uh, you had pled guilty to uh, possession of methamphetamine. The maximum possible penalty for that offense is up to 10 years in prison. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. In file 22-21109-FH, you had pled guilty to possession of analogs. And the maximum possible penalty for that offense is up to two years in prison. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You are entitled to have an attorney to represent you here today and at any other proceedings we have in this matter. If you can't afford an attorney, you can tell me that, and I will appoint one at uh, no expense to you. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Would you like to be represented by an attorney? Yes, please. Do you have the ability to pay for your own? No, Your Honor. All right. I will have you... Uh, Ms. Oh, there, there's Ms. Underwood. So I will have you uh, speak with Ms. Underwood. I'm going to place you in a breakout session right now. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Kennedy is still here. We have Ms. Hinton now. Yes. You want him to come in here? Yeah. Ms. Hennigan, are you ready to proceed with Mr. Kennedy? Ms. Hennigan, are you there? Ms. Hennigan, are you there? All right, her device is logged in. She's uh, apparently not in front of it right now. Get uh, get your case, sir, as soon as she back in front of her device. We have Ms. Underwood and Ms. Price back from the breakout session. Uh, Ms. Underwood, do you know how Ms. Price to proceed? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, I've discussed this matter with Ms. Price and also had communication with Ms. Walsh in this matter. Um, and at this time, Ms. Price wishes to enter a plea in this matter. And I believe Ms. Walsh is going to be recommending that Ms. Price continue her program that she's doing in Ohio, Your Honor, and then continue on probation. All right, Ms. Price, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty for perjury? Yes, Your Honor. And you are Kayla Ann Price, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that you have a right to contest the violation of probation charges and to have a trial on them? Yes, Your Honor. You can put your hand on if you like. Okay. Do you understand that throughout that trial, you would be presumed innocent until your guilt is proven by a preponderance of evidence? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you'd have the right to have all the witnesses against you appear at your trial? You or your lawyer could ask those witnesses questions, and you also have the right to have me order any witnesses you have for your defense to appear at your trial. Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that you're not required to testify at your trial, and no one can say anything about you not testifying or hold that against you in any way? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, on the other hand, you also understand that you have the right to testify at your trial if you wanted to testify. Yes, Your Honor. How do you plead to the charges that you violated the terms of your probation? Guilty. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you're giving up your right to a trial and your right to have your lawyer's assistance at that trial, as I've already explained? Yes, Your Honor. 
Has anything been promised to you in order to get you to plead guilty? No, sir. Have you been threatened in any way in order to get you to plead guilty? No, sir. If I accept your plea, you're giving up any and all claims that the plea was given as a result of threats or promises that were not disclosed to the court on the record uh, this morning, or that it was not your own choice to enter the plea. Do you understand that? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Uh, is it your own choice to plead guilty today? Yes, it is, Your Honor. You were placed on probation in the 22 file back in February of 2023 and in the 21 file back in March of 2022. Is that correct? Correct, yes. And each file has an order of probation in it. Both of those orders of probation have a signature on the defendant's signature line. Did you receive and sign those documents? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Uh, the terms of your probation require that you not uh, break any laws. Is that right? Yes, it is, Your Honor. And did you plead guilty on December 21st, 2023 to identity fraud, attempted possession of cocaine, and failure to appear? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the terms of your probation also require that you not use any uh, controlled substances. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Did you use some methamphetamine on or around November 5, 2023? Yes, I did, Your Honor. All right. I will accept your pleas then. They've been given understandably, voluntarily, and accurately. Uh, Ms. Price has had full knowledge of her rights and she's had competent counsel. I will refer this matter to the probation department for an update of your pre-sentence investigation and set sentencing for April 18th at 8.15 a.m. Okay. All right, uh, so you are all set for today then, uh, Ms. Press. Thank you. What is that date for sentencing, Your Honor? That was April 18th. April 8th? 18th. 18th. 1 8th. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye, Ms. Price. Bye, Ms. Wolf. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Hennigan, are you ready to proceed with Mr. Kennedy? Yes, I am, Your Honor. All right, we are on the record in file 23-21426-FH and 23-21427-FH, also 23-21578-FH. People versus Daniel Martez Kennedy. We are here today for uh, a final pretrial conference in the 23-21426-FH file and pretrial conferences in the other two files. So first, let me ask the attorneys to place their appearances on the record, uh, beginning with Mr. Fleming. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fleming, are you there? All right. Here device. Okay. Sorry, you uh, froze up for a minute there. Can you try that once more? Absolutely. Chris Fleming appeared on behalf of the people. Maris Hennigan on behalf of Mr. Kennedy and my clients appearing in person in the courtroom. All right, Ms. Uh, Hennigan, where do we stand with Mr. Kennedy's case today? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would ask that uh, the prosecutor place their offer on the record um, for the court's benefit and for the purpose of um, future transcripts. Also, um, I would indicate to the court that my client still intends to go forward with trial on the um, 426 case. Um, and also, um, we have pretrial on the other cases, as you've indicated, and he still intends to go forward with trial on those cases um, as well. 
All right, Mr. Fleming, is there a current offer from the people? There is. What I show judges, if he pled it to count one in two, three, two, one, four, two, seven, which is possession of methamphetamine, and count four, please resisting obstruction as a habitual third, and in case two, three, two, one, five, seven, eight, FH, count one, fire and possession by felon, and count four, police resisted obstruction, and count six, malicious destruction of police property as a third habitual offender. The people would dismiss counts two and three in file two, three, two, one, four, two, seven. Dismiss file two, three, two, one, four, two, six, FH uh, in its entirety. And dismiss counts two, three, and five in 23 21578 FH. Thank you. Mr. Fleming, is that one dated November 28th of 23? I see that as of November 9th of 23. Did that change? I believe it did. Um, Mr. Sneed sent out an updated one after that. I do have that one here, though, but I wanted to make sure that you have it. I can place it on the record, but I want to make sure that you have the same one. Go ahead and place it on the record. That way I can probably double check. Okay. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I thought that we both had the same one. Um, the plea agreement that I have, as I stated, is dated November 28th, 2023, sent by um, prosecuting attorney Isaac Sneed. Um, and it states that if the defendant agrees to plead uh, no contest to the following crimes, in file number 23-21578-FH, to count one, firearm possession by felon, count three, police officer resisting and obstructing, count four, police officer resisting and obstructing, count six, malicious destruction of property with the habitual third offender supplement, in file 222163OM to count one, municipal paraphernalia possession. Then the prosecuting attorney's office will, in file 23-21427FH, dismiss all charges. And in file 23-21426FH, dismiss all charges. In file number 23-21578FH, dismiss counts two and five. I just wanted to be clear that that was on the court's record, Your Honor, as my as I indicated, my client chooses to move forward with trial. Um, we're set for trial on the uh, 426 case next week. So I just wanted to be clear that um, the plea offer has been made to him and, and he would like to move forward with trial. All right, so we're set for trial on Tuesday of next week. Uh, have you all provided jury instructions and proposed what year? The people have provided that to the court, as well as Ms. Hennigan. I as well submitted a amended witness list back in February there with just Officer Robinson, uh, as the people intend to call. Yes, and I believe that we provide our response to them as well for that, Your Honor. I will double check that today, but I'm pretty sure it's gone over too. Okay. Are there any other evidentiary issues or anything that we need to address before uh, we have a, a jury ready to go? Not for this particular uh, file, Your Honor. I do not believe so, Judge. I think the people are ready to proceed. <laughs> All right, so we will see everyone back for trial then on March 19th at 9 a.m. So, Mr. Candy, you're all set. You are free. And Judge, I would leave that offer open until Friday, uh, but after that, it's going to be revoked. Okay. So, we'll set pre trials uh, in the other two cases for the trial date. Perfect. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. Right, Mr. Malero, are you ready to proceed with Mr. Madrid? I think so.
Okay, we are on the record in files 22-20968-FH, 22-20969-FH, 22-20972-FH, and 24-21750-FH, People versus Michael Anthony Madrid. We are here today for uh, pretrial conferences in all but the 2024 case. Uh, the 24 case is set for arraignment. First, let me ask the attorneys to place their appearances on the record, beginning with uh, Ms. McClure. B.B. McClure on behalf of the people. Salvatore Malero on behalf of Michael Madrid. All right, and sir, you are Michael Anthony Madrid? Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Malero, have you... Uh, does Mr. Madrid wish to have the information read in the 24 case? Your Honor, at this time, we do acknowledge your seat of the information, waive it, reading in open court. Mr. Madrid would stand mute as to uh, all counts, including the habitual offender notice. We would also acknowledge your seat of the witness list. <clears throat> as the matter be set with pre for a pretrial, as well as uh, in connection with his other matters uh, so that we could see if a, a resolution can be reached. I will enter a not guilty plea for Mr. Madrid in the 24 case. Um, Mr. Malero, how far out did you want to look for a pretrial? Um, maybe three, four weeks, Judge. I mean, not longer than that. Uh, we can do April 3rd at 8.15. That'd be fine. Okay. And I apologize, Ms. McClure, anything we need to address from the people's side? Nothing to add, Judge. Okay. Uh, so we'll set it for pretrial on April 3rd at 8.15. Uh, Mr. Malero, can you do stip and orders for the 2022 files? Uh, sure, Judge, I'll do that. Are we going to do the violation sentencing? <laughs> well, that's what I'm asking to be rescheduled. I, I think he wants to try to resolve this and sentence all at the same time. So I'm going to give him a couple weeks to try to do that. Okay, because that would be a new violation if anything comes out of that new file, just so you know. So this one can go off. It'd be great. <laughs> The moment we're going to hold off until April 3rd. So, Mr. Madrid, you can let the officer that's with you know that you are done with court for today. Thank you, Judge. Call for Harley Busing, please. Mr. Malera, are you ready to proceed with Mr. Lindsay? I am, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Daly, we're just calling for Mr. Busing now. Okay, we are on the record in file 24-21749-FH, People versus Jason Floyd Lindsay. We are here today for an arraignment in this case, and we are proceeding today uh, partially by Zoom and partially in person. Uh, first, let me have the attorneys place their appearances on the record. Thank you. B.B. McClure, may for the people? Salvatore Malero on behalf of half of Jason Lindsay. All right, and sir, you are Jason Floyd Lindsay? Yes. Uh, Mr. Lindsay is here in the courtroom in person. Uh, Mr. Malero, does Mr. Lindsay wish to have the information read? Your Honor, at this time, we would waive the reading of the information uh, in open court, waive any defects of time and place of service. Mr. Lindsay would enter a plea of not guilty and ask the matter be set for pretrial. Uh, there is a possible resolution that I need to review with Mr. Lindsay. So I'd say probably three to four weeks should be enough time. I'll enter not guilty plea for uh, Mr. Lindsay. Ms. McClure, is there anything we need to address from the people side today? Nothing, thank you. All right, let's set it for a pretrial on April 10th at 8.15 a.m. Thank you, Judge. 
So Mr. Lindsay, your next date is April 10th at 8.15. You can come in person if you want, or if you prefer to attend by Zoom, uh, the bailiff can give you our Zoom information and you can do it that way. Okay, uh, Max, so, um, I did. Um... So uh, Mr. Valero, Mr. Lindsay wants to ask something directly to the court. Are you okay with that? Or do you want to just speak to him? Later? Well, Judge, I always get nervous when clients want to talk to the court without running so, it by me first. So I, I have no idea what he's going to ask you. If, if you want to, if, if you want to step outside uh, to the iPad, I can put you in a breakout session. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Okay, Mr. Murphy, are you ready to proceed with Ms. Williams? Yes, Your Honor. We are on the record in files 23-21660-FH and 23-21661-FH, People versus Lori Ray Williams. We are here today for uh, pretrial conferences in both of those cases. We are proceeding today by video conference. First, let me ask the attorneys to place their appearances on the record, uh, beginning with Ms. McClure. B.B. McClure, we have the people. Matt Murphy, appearing back from Ms. Williams. All right, and uh, Mr. Murphy, where do we stand with Ms. Williams' case today? Your Honor, at this time, Ms. Williams is asking for the court to set jury trial on these matters. Well, I think we would obviously need two separate trials for the two separate cases because of two separate instances. Um, but we would ask the court to set trial. We believe that to start out with, it would probably be a one-day jury trial, um, unless uh, Ms. McClure had a different uh, opinion on that. Ms. McClure, any thoughts on length of trial? Well, I I would, I guess if if Mr. Murphy won't stipulate to it, I would file a motion to consolidate these cases if they're domestic violences and they're the same victim. Um, so obviously we would, um, as other acts, I'll file whatever notices I need to file, but um, they would be admissible in, in both cases per um, the statutes. Um, so I do think we could just get one trial day and they could be consolidated for now, and then if the court rules otherwise, we can get a, a second trial date. Um, but otherwise, nothing to add. I, I, I think maybe two days, but maybe a day would be fine. I think even if the court ruled that it was appropriate to try on both, that one day would be sufficient. Um, or maybe I'm wrong about that, but I think even given both, would, one day would be sufficient. And, and for the record, my offer right now is to plead to one case and dismiss the other case. All right, uh, so Ms. Clark, can you find us a one day uh, jury trial date, please? Would you like that backed up to anything, George? Uh, that, that's fine with me if it's a backup. Um, Friday, June 21st at 9 a.m., a backup to Donald Lester. I'm sorry, I missed that date. I didn't hear. June 21st. That'll be fine for myself. One second. That works for the people. 21st. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do a final pretrial on June 12th.
All right, so I would like to uh, hopefully resolve the consolidation issue as quickly as we can so everybody knows what is going to happen going into that. So if we need to file a motion and need to make a ruling, uh, please get that in front of me as quickly as possible. Sounds good. Okay. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll talk with you. I'll give you a call later today or tomorrow about that. Okay. All right, so Ms. Williams, you can go ahead and log out then. Court will issue a scheduling order with all, all our relevant dates in it. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Daly, do you need a breakout session with uh, Mr. Bussing? Yes. Sorry, Mr. Daly, if you respond, we're muted. No, Your Honor, I don't need a breakout date. And I would advise the court that last week we were here and uh, uh, he had an appointment. We were trying to get an appointment scheduled for him to be screened. And uh, that appointment, uh, we just found out today or yesterday, is being scheduled for tomorrow, Miss Teske. So I would rather set this over for until we can know what the results of the screening are or we can set it for trial i i don't care i just wanted to make the judge i just want to make you aware of what's going on there's going to be a plea if he's qualified all right so so let me let me just call the case real quick it's file 24-21728-fh people versus harley victor bussing jr uh today's set for a pre-trial conference uh first let me have the attorney's place their appearance on the record beginning with Ms. McClure. bb mcclure may have the people James Daly on behalf of Trinity, Your Honor. Okay. And so, uh, Ms. McClure, I, I presume you heard Mr. Daly's statements about uh, having a screen set up for drug court. Do you have any objection to adjourning this until we know that the results of that screening? No, no issue with that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's set it then for... March 27th at 8.15. Anything else I need to address with Mr. Bussing's case today? Uh, no, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Mr. Bussing. You can let the officer with you know that you are done with court for today. All right. <clears throat> Cool. Thank you, Judge. Okay, uh, Mr. Malero, I see that Mr. Lindsay is back in the courtroom. Is there something further we need to address with his case today? Uh, there is, Your Honor. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, if you want to come back forward, please. Back on the record in People versus uh, Jason Floyd Lindsay 24 21749 FH. Uh, Mr. Malara, you indicated there was something further that you wanted to address with the court today. Yes, Judge. Uh, we are uh, asking the court to consider uh, modifying Mr. Lindsay's bond conditions to remove the no contact order. The basis for that request is that. Uh, alcohol seems to have been a factor in this matter, number one. Uh, one of his bond conditions is that he uh, takes PBTs twice a day so that alcohol does not continue to be a factor in this matter. My understanding that Mr. Lindsay is compliant with that. Second judge, uh, I was contacted by his wife, who is the uh, subject of the man of this case. And uh, her indication to me was that, uh, in addition to other things, she wanted him to get help, which is happening. But she, it was my understanding she also wanted the no-contact order uh, lifted. So I'd ask the court to consider modifying that bond condition, to perhaps con to allow contact, but that there be no assaultive uh, or... Uh, obstreperous behavior on the part of uh, Mr. Lindsay. 
that would be our request, Jim. Uh, Ms. McClure, any response from the people? So I haven't had to deal with this for a while, but isn't there um, counseling that has to be done on both parties before we can lift a no contact? Well, it's not a requirement. Okay. Well, I, I don't believe that that's <laughs> happened yet. So I guess I would ask that that happened first. Um, and then what was the first part of your request? Just any, um, just the no contact be lifted. Oh, okay. Nothing with the alcohol then. Well, he's taking, he's doing PBTs twice a day. We are not asking that to be changed. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, as if the no contact lifting, we obviously want that to stay in place. Um, but I think typically there's a, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a counseling group. Our victims' rights have the the contact info for it that both parties would undergo, unless Mr. Coase knows. Yeah, typically to get, to get that modified or lifted, um, the victim would have to actually reach out to the Catherine Cobb shelter, um, and typically the defendant would have to reach out to um, John Bailey. Um, and then once the magistrate receives both of those, um, uh, the uh, the party has reached out to them, then, then it could be lifted. Um, the other thing that kind of concerns me, Judge, is that he, him and his wife had uh, a domestic incident in Florida in October of last year, so October 2023, and that was actually pending when this offense took place. So I, I guess maybe what I'm saying is if it's if the court agrees that it's um okay that they we lift the no contact, but he not be allowed to go back in the home or live back in the home at this time until we have a resolution to the case. Yeah, we're we're not asking he goes back in the home, just that the no contact be resolved. Okay. I do have in the court's file. Uh, filed on March 12th. Uh, communication from John Bailey that indicates that uh, both Mr. Lindsay and Miss Lindsay uh, had met with him to discuss their counseling options and better understand domestic violence and also that each of them or that Mr. Bailey believes that each of them understood the information that was presented to them. And it also indicates that uh, Ms. Lindsay is requesting that the uh, bond condition be lifted. So on the, on the basis of that, I will uh, remove the no contact provision, uh, but as discussed uh, and agreed to uh, by Mr. Malero, that, that does not mean he can live in the same household with Ms. Lindsay. Uh, there will still be a restriction that he not live in the, at the same residence. But in terms of removing the no contact, I will, uh, I will remove the no contact at this time. Thank you, Judge. Are we all set on that case then? Yes, we are, Judge. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Miller, I believe that's everything that I had for you today. Uh, you do not have a uh, Michael Chittenden on your docket, Judge? I do not. All right. Thank you then, Judge. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Murphy, I do not believe we have Mr. Perez here today. Do you know anything about his whereabouts? Uh, Your Honor, let me, I called Mr. Perez and left a message um, a little bit ago. 
Um, yeah, we received no answer yet. My, I don't have any message from my office that she's called or anything. So I, I apologize, Your Honor. I don't know where she is. All right, this is file 23-21664-FH People versus Teresa Renee Perez. We're here today for a uh, pretrial conference. First, let me ask the attorneys to place their appearance on the record. B.B. McClure, behalf of the people. Matthew Murphy, appearing on behalf of Teresa Perez. All right, and uh, I had, did have a brief discussion with Mr. Murphy off the record. Uh, Ms. Perez is not present uh, by Zoom today. She is also uh, not here in the courtroom. Uh, Mr. Murphy, is there anything you'd like to state on the record with respect to that issue? Your Honor, um, I had uh, called Ms. Perez uh, earlier this morning um, in hopes to talk with her before we went into the court um, or on Zoom. Uh, I left a message. There is a number that we have on file. Um, it is a number that I've used previously, but I, of course, um, I don't know if she received the message. Um, I guess, you know, I do apologize for her absence, Your Honor. Uh, I'd ask the courts uh, maybe to adjourn, to refrain from doing a bench warrant, perhaps. Uh, I know I understand that she isn't here, but I do believe that um, if she makes contact, she will be appear maybe later today or, or um no, tomorrow. So I would ask the court perhaps to refrain from doing a bench warrant, but obviously I don't have any explanation or excuse for her absence. Uh, Ms. McClure, anything you want to address from the people's side today? Judge, my review of Ms. Perez's uh, criminal history, she does have a history of failure to appear, particularly in district court. Um, and I believe last time we were in court, she did have active district court warrants for failure to appear. I don't, I think they were all minor. Uh, it might've been a probation violation, but she also had a, an attorney general warrant for failure to pay child support. Um, and she has an absconding from back in 2022 as well. And circuit court in this circuit court. Um, in addition, I think the last time we were in on Ms. Prez's case, her phone was dying. Um, so I would ask the court and we couldn't hold a full pretrial. Maybe it was two pretrials ago, but I would ask the court to issue a, a bench warrant with a 48 hour hold. And then on a, a subsequent pretrial, if she is uh, located and, and appears that she be ordered to appear in person so that we could actually pretrial this case. Okay, so what I'm going to do is give her the 48 hour grace period. If we haven't heard uh, from Ms. Perez within 48 hours, I will at that time revoke and forfeit bond and issue a bench warrant for her arrest. I would set bond on that bench warrant in the amount of $10,000 cash or sure. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And that's all that I believe I had in your court, Your Honor, this morning. Um, if I'm wrong, yeah, please you. contact. But that is all I had for you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Okay, uh, Ms. Underwood, we still do not have Mr. Moreno. Uh, do you know anything about him? Uh, your Honor, uh, Mr. Moreno bonded out and I'm not sure uh, where he is at the moment. Um, I've talked to Ms. Brunner, Your Honor, and I don't believe she would have any objection to putting this out two weeks and seeing if we can locate Mr. Moreno 
and see what the misunderstanding <laughs> was, Your Honor. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. correct, Your Honor. I don't have an objection. Hopefully, counsel can get in touch with them and we can get them uh, here next time. Okay. All right. So this is file 24-21, I'm sorry, 24-21714-FH People versus Jesus Joseph Moreno. Uh, we're here today for a pretrial conference in this case. First, let me have the attorneys place their appearances on the record. Sarah Brenner, Assistant Attorney General for the People, Your Honor. Good morning. Rhonda Underwood for Mr. Moreno, Your Honor. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so we just had a, a conversation regarding uh, Mr. Moreno's presence. I don't know how much, if any, of that was on the record. So just to summarize, Mr. Moreno is not present here today, either by Zoom or in person. Um, I did discuss that issue with Ms. Underwood and Ms. Brenner. It's my understanding that uh, both Ms. Underwood and Ms. Brenner, you're in agreement with setting this out a couple of weeks uh, to see if Mr. Moreno can be reached and appear at the next pretrial. Is that right? That's, That's correct, correct, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, let's set it then for April 3rd at 8.15. Thank you, Your Honor. And I will be happy to do the stip, and adjourn, stip to adjourn with Ms. Brunner's permission. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge. Okay, thank you very much then. I think that's uh, it for this case. Uh, all right, Ms. Underwood, do you need a breakout session with Mr. King? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. King, if you give me just a moment here, I'm going to place you in a breakout session with Ms. Underwood so you can speak to her privately. Mm -hmm.
Okay, we are on the record in file 23-21419-FH, People versus Derek Eugene King. Uh, we're here today for uh, arraignment on a request and summons for probation violation. Uh, we are proceeding today by video conference. Uh, sir, you are Derek Eugene King? Yes. Mr. King, have you received a copy of the request and summons for probation violation? No. Give me a moment and I will put it up on the screen for you. We'll also fax it over to the jail. Yeah. Okay, Mr. King, I'm placing that up on the screen now, or did they get... Take whatever time you need to look that over and just let me know when you're finished. Yeah, I'll see it and put the ready. All right. Okay, uh, so Mr. King, the summons for probation violation alleges that you violated the terms of your probation by uh, failing to report. Uh, to your probation officer, um, you had previously in this case 
pled guilty to two counts of assaulting, resisting, obstructing a police officer uh, with a third habitual offender notice or third offense. Uh, that would make the maximum possible penalty in your case up to 15 years in prison. Do you understand that? Uh huh. Uh, you're entitled to have an attorney represent you with respect to this probation violation. And if you can't afford an attorney, you can tell me that I'll appoint one for you at public expense. Would you like to be represented by an attorney? Uh, yes. yes. Do you have the ability to pay for your own? Uh, Do you have the ability to pay for your own attorney? No. All right. So I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. You've already spoken to Ms. Underwood. Uh, Ms. Underwood, you need to speak with Mr. King any further. Yes, Your, your Honor. Um, I believe he is qualified for public defender. I've spoken with Mr. King. It's my understanding this is a technical violation, Your Honor, and Mr. King wishes to plead guilty to it. All right, Mr. King, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty for perjury? Yes. Do you understand, Mr. King, that you have a right to contest the violation of probation charge and have a trial? So a technical violation? What's the difference? What's the technical violation? I really don't understand. I mean, the technical. Mr. King. A technical yeah. violation means the probation department is limited in the punishment. Oh, can... uh -huh. okay. All right. Well, my, yes, I um, had COVID this week, one week. Mr. King, Mr. King, Mr. King, I'm sorry, I, but I have to ask you questions to make sure you understand what your rights are before you talk okay. further about the situation. Okay. So can we just get through that real quick? Yes. Okay, so do you understand you have a right to contest the violation and have a trial? Yes. Do you understand that throughout that trial, you'll be presumed innocent until your guilt is proven by a preponderance of evidence? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Right. But um, I'm, I, I guess Mr. King, Mr. King I, have to, I have to finish the questions that I have to ask before I can let you speak further, okay? Yes. I'll, I'll give you an opportunity when, when the time is right. I just have to get through what I have to get through first. You have a right to have all of the witnesses against you appear at your trial. You or your lawyer can ask those witnesses questions, and you also have the right to have me order any witnesses you have for your defense to appear at your trial. Do you understand all of that? Yes. Yes. You are not required to testify at your trial, and no one can say anything about you not testifying or hold that against you in any way. Do you understand that? Yes. On the other hand, you'd also have the right to testify if you wanted to testify. Do you understand that as well? Yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. Uh, how do you want to plead to the charge that you violated your probation by failing to report? Guilty. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you're giving up your right to a trial and your right to have your lawyer's assistance at that trial, as I've already explained? Yes. Has anything been promised to you in order to get you to plead guilty? Uh, yes. Has anything been promised to you in order to get you to plead guilty? No. Have you been threatened in any way to get you to plead guilty? No. Uh, if I accept your plea, you'll be giving up any and all claims that your plea is given as a result of threats or promises were not disclosed to the court on the record this morning, or that it was not your own choice to enter the plea. You understand that? Right. Yes. Is it your own choice to plead guilty? Yes. <laughs> Uh, so you were uh, sentenced and placed on probation back in this case, uh, back in the beginning of February. Is that correct? Yes. 
Uh, and at that time, one of your conditions of probation was that you report to your probation officer as instructed. Is that right? Yes. And uh, the allegation is that you didn't report at any time after the sentencing. Is that what happened? Yes. Okay. I contacted the uh, probation department. I got sick, and then I all uh, kind of issues. Okay, but but did you ever go in and report? No, I didn't get a chance to. Okay, why didn't you get a chance to? Well, I went to I went out to my I went to trying to get my I uh, got sick the one week I had covert. Then the next week I tried to I was trying to get my finances straightened out for my family. And I don't know my my um my uh money was was somehow my money had been locked in my um and I couldn't use my 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 car getting my finances and I was just trying to deal with a lot of issues right that I had money saved I could not get access to it and still can't get access to it my ID I lost the ID so I have to send proof of that or birth certificate things that I've been a lot of my information and personal stuff is lost so I can't I've been going through a lot of trying to get a hold to a lot of my personal information. So I can get, so I can get access to my 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 income, oh, you know, and they, and I gotta prove that I'm me to even get to any of it. All right, uh, I, I am going to accept your plea. I understand what you've said. Uh, the instruction was that you uh, report to your probation officer immediately upon release from jail, and I I know you've outlined some difficulties in your life that you've had since you got released, but. I don't think though, any of those rise to the level of, of excusing uh, the not coming in and reporting. Right. I you would have been able. You would have been able to do that despite the difficulties that you've talked about. So I am going to accept your plea. It's been given understandably, voluntarily, and accurately. You've had full knowledge of your rights and had competent counsel. Right. Uh, your Honor, may I be heard as to the issue of bond? Uh, go go ahead. Uh, what is it you'd like to say? Your Honor, as you know, this is a technical violation. Mr. King is an um, older gentleman who was in jail for a long time. Um, he got out of jail and his, as he said, his financial situation is precarious at best uh, due to the um, I believe the prolonged period in jail has kind of exacerbated that. Um, he's trying to get his ID so he can get his um, income restarted, Your Honor. I would ask that Mr. King be re released from jail to make whatever strides on that he can, Your Honor. It's only going to benefit everyone in the long run to have that done and... Um, I don't believe Mr. King meant any disrespect to the probation department. And I don't believe okay, so, he's, so he's, he's in jail bond. now, not related to this. So if I issue a PR bond, is he going to be released? He's on a parole violation as well. Well, that's just that's day face. Yeah, I'll be released from that too. He also has no residence that I know of. All right. So uh, the the practical reality of the situation is that we have to have our rent. I have to have ID and all to get the income. People there to have a residence. <sighs> Mr. 
the, the practical reality of the situation is that uh, the, there's a limit of uh, 15 days in jail for a first technical violation. And uh, as I am out next week, I'm not able to conduct a sentencing hearing within that 15 days. Uh, and therefore, uh, I believe I have to issue a PR bond if we go beyond the 15 day period. So uh, I am going to do that. I'm going to order Mr. King that you, upon leaving the jail, you need to walk across the street and report to Ms. Holly or check in with probation, whoever is there at the time. I want you to understand that if you don't do that, and if you don't show up at probation and report at any other point, when you're directed to, it's going to be another violation. Okay. Okay. And then if there's a second violation, the limit isn't 15 days, it's 30 days. If there's a third violation, the limit's 45 days. And if there's a violation after that, the court can revoke probation and impose any sentence that I could have sentenced at the original sentencing. Okay. So if you keep not reporting when you're ordered to report you know if you do that enough times ultimately yes your probation can get revoked and your original guidelines in one of the cases was a prison sentence mm -hmm. so you need to understand all that as you are making decisions on what you're going to do mm -hmm. Uh, but for now, for the reasons stated, um, we issue a PR bond. Do you have residence? Uh, let's hold off on an address, uh, Ms. Holly. I don't want that broadcast on uh, YouTube. So I'm going to set sentencing for April 4th at 8.15 a.m., Again, as soon as you're released, you need to walk across the street and check in with probation. And I'm going to place you in a breakout session with Ms. Holly so that she can get any contact information that you have. Okay. Okay. Give me just a second to click the right buttons. Okay, so we can call people versus fair. Okay, we are on the record in file 22-21104 FH people versus Bailey Christopher James Barron. Uh, we're here today for a hearing on a summons for probation violation. We are proceeding today uh, by video conference. Records should reflect that this matter was set for a uh, hearing on a probation violation summons this morning at 8.15 a.m. Mr. Barron was ordered to appear here in court at that time. He has not appeared either in person or by video conference. I am uh, therefore going to issue a bench warrant for his arrest, and I will set bond on that bench warrant in the amount of uh, $10,000 cash or sure. Actually, all right, we are on the record now in file 23-21399 FH People versus Ashley Nicole B. We are here today on a summons for probation violation.
We are proceeding today uh, by video conference. All right, so reviewing the request and summons for a probation violation, there is no date set in that for a, oh, I'm sorry, there is. I missed that, so, so yes. The uh, record should reflect that this matter was set for uh, hearing on a summons for probation violation. This morning at 8.15 a.m., Ms. Beam was ordered to appear. Uh, she has not appeared either by Zoom or by uh, coming to the courthouse in person. I'm going to issue a bench warrant for her arrest for that failure to appear. And I'll set bond on the bench warrant in the amount of $10,000 cash assurance. Uh, Ms. Underwood on People versus Jones. I don't have MDOC here today. And I do not see a writ in the file uh, for his appearance. So we're going to need to adjourn that. Uh, Mr. King, you're all set. You can let the officer with you know that you're done with court. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so let's adjourn uh, Mr. Jones. Let's go with April 17th, if that's all right. 417, Your Honor. And will the prosecutor be doing the red on that, Your Honor? Yeah, it looks like we missed it this time. I'm not exactly sure how, but I'll uh, follow up with the staff to make sure we get it for the next hearing. I will do the stip in order with Ms. McClure's permission. No objection. And what was that next date? 417. All right, and so that leaves only Mason Lindemann, who was. We needed a, I think a, a special PD appointed on that case, Judge. Oh, we did. That was the la the last time we were here. Um, he was getting arraigned on his failure to appear, and we had set this underlying for a pretrial, and we needed. Yeah, we, we used. It looked like you had signed a, a appointment for a special PD uh, because Elias Mawad withdrew from the case and he's already had the public defender's office, um, basically fired the public defender's office. And yeah. So he was also in uh, Jackson County Jail. Yes until at least April 5th. Yeah. According to the notes I have, uh, they are not logged in with him today. Um, okay. And so why don't we... Am I free to go to Judge Ann Sloan's, Your Honor? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Thank so why don't, we set it, why don't we set it for April 3rd for a pretrial then? And that order was signed, right? The one setting, assigning a special PD. Uh, the last thing I have is in the file is a February 29th order just appointing the public defender's office. Okay. I, I don't, when I, when they move to a special public defender, I don't think I typically sign an order until it's been through Mr. Castleberry and he's appointed someone uh, that, you know, that that happens internally in the public okay. defense office, I believe. I, I'll follow up and see if there's anything else that we need to do, but I, I don't think there is in terms of getting him a special public defender. Okay. Yeah, I guess who can we talk to over to, to make sure that that happens? Because this is an older case. I'd like to 
get some yeah. movement I'll, on I'll, it. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll follow up on it. And if there's any, any further order the court needs to sign right now, make sure that happens. Okay. Yeah, and if there's anything I can do, let me know too. Uh, so can you do a, uh, a writ for him for the next year? Yeah, it looks like we sent something to Jackson County for today. We never heard anything back. So I'll see if we can get something out. Okay. Uh, all right. I think that covers everything that I had for today. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Have a nice day.
Did you empty that? Huh? Did you empty that? No. You had them in your pocket while you went through there. The medicine? Medicine? Yeah. Yeah. You just empty it up and said, I Oh, really? 
some efficient frame to do that. Yeah. So this is 36 to 40. She was the one. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Here, we have time for this future hour release. Other normal so far. Yeah. Whatever he had on his prior bond commissions all remain the same. Was this Lindsay? Oh, you know, because I was like, I just wanted to remember. Yeah. Like you modify it. Great. Jail. Just start Mr. Buster. Oh, I already did. Oh, and it's fine. And I heard his notice that he didn't tell Daily to do it. Yeah. And he's still streaming live, by the way. So. So we should do it. So we have an offer. The hair is really cool. That's it. We're going to have an offer that I said for $185. I just think that they should have the rest of the $11,000 and close it off. I mean, but it's like a short So you can still. Oh, right now, I'm just going back here. Yep. Yeah. 